With the Pringles rocket on an E30-7. Scarlett, are you ready? Okay, she's ready. We're going in five, four, three, two, one, start. Quick motor there. Laundry's out. Good flight. Yeah, free fall. Wait there, man. Um, heads up. Booster's coming down separate from the parachute. So that could have gone a little better, but welcome back. We're going to do a post-mortem of the Pringles rocket. As you can see here, we did uh, land on that fin and snapped it over. So uh, like everything here, we're going to destroy it and see what went well and how things held up. We did a few different things on, on this rocket. One of them that you see here is we used PLA filament, just 3D printer filament. Uh, to make little plastic rivets. Um, so actually those turned out to be pretty structural overall and held up for, for this use. Uh, so I'm pretty pleased with that. As you can see, we just sort of heated them up and then melted each side uh, just like you would a hot rivet. The Pringles cans themselves actually held up remarkably well for taking two uh, falls without an open parachute here or one without a parachute at all. Uh, so I can recommend those. The foiling in the middle also seems to have held up pretty well against the heat and whatnot. So obviously a couple things didn't go too well. Uh, one was that this final flight, the inner motor tube, as you can see, just sort of completely unraveled. Um, the other thing is obviously the shock cord broke and that led to the nose cone sailing off into the sunset on the parachute without the booster to the rocket. Uh, we had an elastic element in there with this, this rubber band, but it looked like it knotted itself to remove the, the dynamic component from the system. And then that combined with an overly energetic ejection charge here, I think. Uh, a little bit of a high velocity at the deployment and a really, really rapid parachute opening to uh, just overstress the shock cord. The end of the motor mount, we had this three half moon baffle that we put in uh, with JB Weld holding in place and provide some uh, heat tolerance there. And it held up pretty well. Uh, we can see that there's pretty dirty, uh, decent amount of burn debris. But the real problem here is that we've really just charred and made brittle this this whole engine tube here. We've done some other baffles where we've sprayed high temperature spray paint in inside. Uh, that seems like it helps a, a little bit, but I think overall probably these thin wall low low power tubes um, for minimum diameter at least are just not suitable for this style of baffle uh, as convenient as they are otherwise. So we're just going to go through and salvage the eye bolt here and then do a destructive test and see how well these construction methods worked out and uh, what their breaking point is and see if we can learn anything about how to do it better next time. So for now, we're just gonna cut a window out we're gonna take the rail button off and then we're gonna see what the internal fillets look like, check for adhesion, um, see if when we slid the fin can up, we got even distribution of the glue and see sort of how much peel strength we have on these attachments. Just going to go around and sort of peel each one of those off and check the coverage. Uh, overall, I got to say it was, was relatively sturdy. Uh, besides the obvious uh, the fin breaking, everything else seemed to be in, in pretty bomber shape. So once we're satisfied with that, we're going to start flexing the fins until they fail. That took a, a pretty significant amount of force. We're going to do it again uh, off camera here with the, the second fin. But what we do see, as with the crash damage, that the attachment to the fin can is really the, the weakest point of the fin there. Uh, and so that's naturally where it wants to shear. You can also see the overall layout of the fin can here with the, the laser cuts. Uh, I do think that worked out pretty well. From here, we're gonna go on to evaluate the rest of it, see how it held up given the damage to the end of the motor mount. We're gonna start by cutting off the end of the motor retainer here. Those are just printed out of PLA plastic. I was uh, initially concerned that the temperatures involved might sort of cause those to, to warp, but uh, there's no real evidence of that. Then we're going to move on to just several abuses to this inner motor mount tube here. Uh, holds up pretty well. I think had the other end uh, not exploded, we probably could have uh, continued to indefinitely fly this one from a general fatigue life. So we're going to continue to stress the rest of this. It's going to take a significant amount of force to end up breaking that fin in the middle. Uh, so overall, the fin design was pretty pretty solid. 
The last thing we're going to look at is we made a coupler out of another Pringles can and just used some tape to fill the space there. The original concept was we wanted to be able to take this apart uh, to, to modify it. Obviously, it didn't live long enough for that to be needed, but that's why we didn't glue the coupler in place in the main body tubes and why we had those rivets shown earlier. I hope everybody's had a good time watching the, the autopsy of this rocket. I know we picked up a couple things from the dissection, and hopefully y'all did it as well. We'll see you again soon here at A Little Ad Labs.